Turn to Proverbs 7.25. This will be our last verse for tonight. He says, Let thine heart decline, let not. There we go. That, those little words are important. <laughs> <laughs> there was actually a Bible. There was a Bible made, and it was dubbed the Wicked Bible. And it's because it left out, I think it was in um, the Ten Commandments, it left out not in the verse that says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. And it said, Thou shalt commit adultery. And they called it the Wicked Bible. Because it was just a printing error, of course. Yeah, it was a King James. I think it was a King James. Um, but yeah. Oops. So that's kind of a biggie, right? You don't, you don't want to forget those ones. No. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. You think about how many negatives there are in the Bible. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. Right? There's just so many no's and nots in the Bible. Um, it's, it's more negative than, than positive, I would say. But think about it. Remember, we're God's children. He's instructing us out of the Bible. How many parents, how many times do you say no versus yes? Right? No, 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 no. It's just continual, right? Don't do that. Stop doing that. It's always no, right? And God's no different. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Now here you're probably going to learn something. Because if you were like me, you thought decline meant to go down, didn't you? Didn't you? Everybody thought decline means to go down, right? Yeah, well, you were wrong, just like I was. Decline means to turn or bend aside, to deviate from the straight course, to turn away. Figuratively, to turn aside in conduct, especially to swerve or fall away from rectitude, duty, allegiance, instructions, etc. So when you decline, you're just going astray, left or right. I mean, it could be down, I suppose, but primarily it's, it's off the path, left or right. And this is why it is important to define terms, especially when you're reading the King James Version with an old dictionary, because word meanings have changed. And that's why a lot of times, especially when I'm doing a book study, when I'm just going verse by verse, I'll often define most of the words, unless it's just a very common word that I know for sure that I know the definition of. A lot of times I'll define the word because I find either that it, there, there's a bit of a difference in meaning than I thought, or you just get a whole bunch of synonyms and you get a broader understanding of what the word is, is teaching there just by getting all the synonyms, uh, words that mean the same thing. So anyway, to decline means to, to, to bend, to go away, to deviate. To decline to the strange woman's ways is to turn aside and deviate from God's ways. Because if he says, let not, uh, how do you say it there, let not thine heart decline to her ways, well, if you're declining to her ways, guess where you are turning from? From God's ways. Because right? God's got a way, the, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and he's got ways that we're supposed to live, and we decline from that, we end up going in somebody else's ways. And this is what he's telling him. Don't go in the ways of the strange woman. We're not to decline from God's word. He tells us this in a couple of places. Uh, Psalm 119 and verse 157 is one of them. Psalm 119, verse 157. He says, Many are my persecutors and mine enemies, yet do, not I, not, uh, yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. Now this tells us right there that just because we are persecuted and we have enemies is not an excuse to turn from God's ways, to turn from his testimonies. It's no excuse to say, well, you know, I was persecuted, I was threatened, and therefore I couldn't do this or I couldn't do that or I had to do this. No, you don't. You just stick with what God says. Don't worry about persecution. You don't veer off the path just because the going gets rough. Proverbs 4 and verse 5. He says, Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Don't turn to the right hand or the left hand. Don't be taken off that straight and narrow way which leadeth unto life. Solomon had previously instructed his son to stay on that straight and narrow way and not turn to the right hand or the left hand. That was in the last verse of this, uh, chapter 4, verse 27. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. 
Remove thy foot from evil. And so many times, the truth is found right in the middle. I like what Robinson Crusoe's father told him when he wanted to go be a seafaring man. It's in that novel, Robinson Crusoe. And he told him to take the middle station of life. Don't go off on the, don't go off, be a seafaring man and get in all this dangerous work where you're, you have a chance of being shipwrecked or something like that. Just, just stay in the middle station. Just, just, you know, walk down the middle. Think about all the doctrinal errors that you can get yourself in. You can go over here to the right and be a premillennialist. You can go over here to the left and be a postmillennialist. Or you can walk right down the middle and be a biblical millennialist, right? Or you can go over here on the right and read an NIV, or you can go over here on the left and read an NASB, or you can walk straight down the middle and read a KJV. All right, just all kinds of, I mean, you know, tons of them. You could be a socialist or a alt-right, you know, lunatic. You know, like way off on the fringe, way off on the, the right, too far. Or you can walk down the middle. That's what we should endeavor to do. Let our moderation be known unto all men. Now, God's way concerning romantic relationships, which is what we're talking about here. My son, let not thy uh, heart, how do you say it? Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Well, in the context of her ways here, we're talking about romantic relationships. We're not talking about her ways of cooking or something like that. We're talking about her ways as it pertains to this particular topic. And God's way concerning romantic relationships is to get married to one woman. Remember Mark 10, 6 through 9. I'll show you God's way. And then any way that deviates from that are the ways of the world. Mark 10, 6 through 9. But from the beginning of the creation, God made the male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. So God's way is for one man to have one woman as his wife. For life. Romans 7, 2 through 3. This is not difficult. Shouldn't even be controversial. But today, of course it is. I mean, most people don't practice this. You have all kinds of deviants out there. The people not even getting married in the first place. People getting married and just, you know, if it doesn't work out, they just leave their spouse. Um, Open marriages, I mean, that, that's actually a thing, right? People do that. It's craziness. Romans uh, 7, 2 through 3. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man... So, let me see, let me see that. I don't think that sounded right. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. So that's the Bible standard. One man, one woman, for life, and you don't leave that man or that woman and marry somebody else, because that's adultery. And then you only have sex with that one woman. Hebrews 13 and verse 4. This is God's way concerning romantic relationships. Hebrews 13, which I've quoted it enough in this study, I could just quote it for you. Marriage is honorable and all in the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. That's what it says, right? So that's God's way. One man, one woman, for life, that's your only sex partner. That's God's way. The strange woman's ways are either to never get married and have sex with whomever she chooses or to get married and have sex with whomever she chooses. That's the strange woman's ways. And God says, don't decline to her ways. Don't veer off the road to any of those extremes. Stick with God's ways. If we follow God's ways and not her ways, then we'll have a blessed life, a happy wife, and a pleased God. But if we don't and we go in the way of the strange woman, we're going to have sorrow, misery, and death. 
And that's what Solomon goes on to say in Proverbs 7, 26 through 27. God's ways are always the best ways. They're usually the hardest ways. So if you want to know which way is God's way, if you have a decision to make, and you want to know which way is God's way, even if you didn't know a thing about the Bible, just think which decision is the hardest one to, which is the hardest way? That's probably God's way, more than likely. The easy way is usually the wrong way. The easy way is to do whatever brings instant gratification. The hard way is to make the hard decisions which bring lasting joy and peace and prosperity and things like that. But it's usually the hard way. Uh, Proverbs 7, uh, 26 through 27. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. I think it's interesting that um, Solomon's saying that, you know, you let not your heart decline unto her. And in Proverbs 16, 9, it says, a man's heart devises his way. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do you say it's like he's basically telling him you guide your heart or your desire Mm -hmm. to the right way. Right. Yeah. And he says in another place that uh, guide thine heart in the way. Yes. Yep. That's right. Yeah, we all devise our ways, but then the rest of that verse says, the but Lord the Lord directed, directed the steps, right? But yes, we devise the ways, but make sure that the ways that we're devising are in accordance with what the Scripture says, and that's how the Lord directs your steps, by giving you the wisdom to walk in the, in the path that he's laid out for you. And then Solomon says, and go not, or go not astray in her paths. Astray means out of the right way, away from the proper path, wandering, away from the right, in or into error or evil. It's uh, similar to decline. When you decline, you go astray, and vice versa. Now, the paths of the strange woman incline unto death. This is interesting, incline, decline. Um, Proverbs 2 and verse 18 It says, for her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. So if you decline to her ways, you are going to incline into her house. Or if you incline to her house, you have declined from God's ways. None that walk on her paths return again, either at all or as the men that they once were. Nor do they take hold of the paths of life. We covered this verse you know, a while back. Uh, verse 19 None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. And as you'll probably remember, you might remember, that was a long time ago, none that go unto her return again. Well, if you walk in there and her husband happens to be home, you might not return. You might not ever walk back out the door. Um, Or you might not return as the same man that you went in as because he that committeth adultery with a woman destroyeth his own soul. Right? He, he, he gives his honor unto others, his years unto the cruel, his flesh and his body are consumed, his wealth is in the house of a stranger, all those things in Proverbs 5. He goes in there as a healthy, wealthy, whole person. He comes out as a diseased, dishonored pauper because... His wealth is going to go in the house of a stranger. So you don't, go, you don't come out the same way you came in if you come out at all. So to ensure that we don't go astray in her paths, it's critical to not enter into them in the first place, but to avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. This is such an important point. Proverbs 4, 14 through 15. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. And we went over those verses, of course, to avoid it. So just stay away from it altogether. Pass not by it. If you happen to not stay away from it altogether, when you're heading towards it, don't even walk by it. Veer off the way. Uh, turn from it. That's if you get there. If you're already right next to it, turn away, and then pass away. Get Turn around and head back the other way. And it's really important to not enter into the path in the first place. It's way harder 
to stop doing something sinful after you've already started than it is to never start in the first place. Right? It's a lot easier to stay on the right path than it is to try to find your way back to it after falling in a ditch or wandering out into the wilderness. I mean, think about it. Like, it's, it's a lot easier to never drink too much alcohol in the first place than it is to go through a 12-step program after years of it and try to get yourself sober again. Right? Just as one example. Or if you get an addiction to anything, it's way easier never to look at internet pornography in the first place than it is to try to get all those images out of your mind, which you will never do. They'll always be up there and you're going to have a struggle after that point. It's way easier to not start down that path. And there's all kinds of other examples um, I'm sure you could think of. So that's why he says go not astray in our paths. Because it started out, if you'll remember, where he says he went down the way to her house. Remember there in verse 8, passing through the street near her corner, he went the way to her house. That was his first mistake. If he would have not gone astray in her past, if he would have never even walked towards her house where he knew the temptation might have been, if he would have made not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof, he would have never ended up in her house. That's why it's really important not to go astray. Stick to the straight and narrow. Don't veer to the right hand or to the left. 